Hey there, welcome back. This is Daryl from the Jackson Fishing Team, and uh, I'm going to start a little series six flies on uh, for shad fishing. That's going to be here in South Carolina, probably starting towards the end of December, maybe January, February. But uh, so this will get get my fly box filled up with uh, some shad flies and of course you do lose a lot you're fishing around rocks and some current and in there and maybe with a sink tip and you're getting down too too deep and things like that but anyway so you go through a lot of flies um, so we're gonna tie one that uh, I don't know I came came up with with a bunch of different things I've seen on shad flies and made it a little different so let's take a look at it and uh, and show I'll show you how I'm gonna tie it this is uh, my effort for uh, for a shad fly we're gonna I'll show you how I tie it I don't know if it's gonna work but uh, I'm gonna give it a try this year and uh, normally I use uh, like a crazy Charlie or a gotcha type fly like you use for bonefish or permit. But uh, I'm going to tie up a few of those in this series as well. But uh, we're going to start off with one that I've, that I've tied here. And I've also tied it in hot orange and um, pearl but they all have the basic uh, concept that's got a pink uh, hot pink bead and uh, some silver flash move for a tail the only thing that changes is the color of the body this uh, collar stays the same it's a hot pink and ice stub but uh, let's go ahead and get time on there The hook I'm going to use is uh, a Daiichi 1720 in a size 4, and that happens to be uh, a 3x long nymph hook in there. And uh, the beads I'm going to use um, is going to be some hot pink, Hot bead by Spirit River, quarter inch or 6.3 millimeters. Um, it's a big bead for the, the hook that we're using, but uh, I want it to get down in the water column in case I decide to use just a floating line with a leader. But normally I do fish with a, a sink tip, about a nine foot sink tip along with the leader. And, uh, On there so we'll in, I've already debarbed the hook you can see that right here and uh, the thread I'm going to use I'm going to tie a short truce one is good so I'm going to use some 210 short truce um, whatever color you decide to tie it in for the area that you're fishing short truce is really common a good color for for the the Charleston area but just match your thread to the color of the body and if you didn't want to use a pink bead, you could get pick your own, you know. So I'm going to let put a layer of thread down. back up to the the top of here now shad flies they don't have to be pretty but so you're probably not going to see a pretty fly here again I'm going to use uh, 1000 micro flashaboo tinsel flash and silver I'm just gonna 
take about that much because I'm going to end up doubling this over. Since I got a big bead, I'm going to try to put some of these in, in here. And if I don't get them all in, that's fine. As long as I can get them all locked in. And I'm going to take this back to uh, right where the barb used to be. And I'm using the material to help build that body up. And now I'm going to just fold this over. I don't want a very long tail. <coughs> um, shad are very notorious for uh, short striking, just hitting at the tail. And they're not really eating your fly. They're, uh, you know, they, they kind of eat plankton or whatever like that, but what they're, and I'm going to fold this over. What they're normally eating is, is plant type stuff, small plants, uh, plankton and things like that from my understanding. So what they're trying to do is protect their eggs. And when they see something come in, they kind of nudge it and scare it out of there. And sometimes they will eat your fly pretty good. And I've got this. This is what I'm going to use to wrap my body. But I'm going to first put on uh, some Palmer, sh in Palmer chenille medium size and I'm using chartreuse and sometimes when you look at this it looks like it's got some kind of grain and so that kind of almost looks like it's flowing downward in there so I'm just going to tie this in. And even though I'll be tying a series of six different patterns for shad, I would say whatever you have your confidence in, that's about the only fly you really need to tie. You don't need the You don't need to tie up a bunch of different types, whatever you got there. You know, clouser flies work. Like I said, Crazy Charlies I've used in the past. Gotcha flies for out of my bonefish thing. And I'm just wrapping this on the body. I'm not too concerned about it. Just to give it a little silver body and we'll lock this in place Before we wrap this, I'm only going to cut this so it's like a half of an inch. And for me, the half inch is just behind this knuckle right here, that screw. Just trim that off. 
like I said, you don't want a long tail. I'm going to give this one full wrap where the tail's at. And as I pull this back, and then once I got that one full tail there, I'm just going to kind of palmer this going forward. I'm not going to go touchy curves. I just want to keep it sparse because I want this fly to sink pretty good. If I had a lot of material on there, it will uh, offset the, the drift. The sink rate and then also that silver body will show through a little bit as well adding a little other types of splash flash to the fly and as I go forward I'm gonna palmer these Once I get back behind the bead here, I'll give it a couple extra turns. So I can start filling in that big bead a little bit. Create a dubbing loop for the making the collar. I'll put my little twirler in, and then I'm going to take some of this. Uh, hot pink ice stub now I'm going to try to align the fibers a little bit and just stack them on top of each other and then uh, open up Try to spread this out a little bit. Now I'm going to pinch it right here and twirl that there. And while I'm pinching it, it's going to build up some energy and cause those fibers to spin. And I'll do that a couple times. And then I'll take out my brush and kind of brush some of this out a little bit better. And then I'm just going to wrap this collar in there. And it's going to add a contrasting color to the Let's lock that bead in pretty good. We'll go ahead and lock that in. Click 
get that off. Some locking loop locks back there. And I'm add some head cement right on the thread here. And I give it a couple whip finishes. Another good color would be uh, pink, but I didn't have any pink uh, Palmer Chanel, and when I went to the two fly shops, they didn't have any either, not in medium. And there you have it, my, my shad fly that I'm going to try this year. in a couple months on there. All right. Other materials you might want to consider is um, some FNF uh, jelly. Be good, good option. I wouldn't tie it very tight. Some uh, UV polar chenille, which is very similar to Palmer chenille. Maybe some UV light flex wrap. That's got some very similar to uh, Estaz, but it's got little rubber legs in there and stuff like that. Be some good choices there. Or maybe you could even tie the whole thing up using uh, a dubbing loop to, uh, to to put on there. Anyway, whatever you want to want to give a try, I would. Um, don't know where, where you're at and what, what area you are, but, uh, you know, Florida usually gets the shad bite a lot sooner than we do up here in Charleston, so, you know, you got to follow them, and then they kind of migrate going up along the east side there, you know, along the shore, the ocean coming in the inlet rivers and stuff like that, and get up there, and another good option is a lot of times you can follow, they'll follow up. And stripers will be behind them as well, and uh, or big catfish. So a lot of opportunities when the shad runs going on if you uh, if you want to take advantage of it. All right, I'm Daryl, and uh, we'll see you on the water and tie up a few of these and put in your box for for some shad. They might even work for brim or bass. All right.